Hello, today I will be presenting on the school to prison pipeline. Just give me one moment while I share my screen. All right, let me just get it up here. Okay. So the school to prison pipeline by me, Carolyn Hare. So what is the school to prison pipeline? The school to prison pipeline refers to the policies and practices that push students, particularly those from marginalized communities, out of schools and into the criminal justice system. This root of this pipeline was created and maintained by several underlying factors, such as over-reliance on law enforcement in schools, zero tolerance policies, and exclusionary disciplinary practices, such as suspensions and expulsions. Minority students are particularly affected, especially Black and Latino youth. This is due to the previously mentioned factors, as well as they are more likely to attend schools with inadequate resources. Several communities are working to disrupt the pipeline by promoting restorative justice practices, provide students with the resources and support, and advocate for policy changes that prioritize prevention and intervention over punishment. So speaking of restorative justice, what is it? Restorative justice is an alternative pathway that strays away from traditional punishments. It promotes accountability and healing rather than zero tolerance policy punishments, such as expulsions. The process is usually taken on a lighter approach where the victim and offender can sit down, for example, and talk in a facilitated setting. They can express their feelings to each other and come up with resolutions and future goals. Restorative justice practices may also involve community service, especially in property and community crimes, to restore the damage and put people back at peace. Overall, restorative justice is often seen as a more humane and effective approach to juvenile justice rather than immediately involving youth in the criminal justice system. Here I found a study by Sherman about what happens when restorative justice is applied to youth. Restorative justice practices reduce recidivism rates by up to 50% for juvenile offenders compared to traditional court processing. The reduction in recidivism rates was particularly significant for violent crimes, which saw a reduction of 43%, and property crimes, which saw a reduction of 61%. The study also found that restorative justice practices were more cost-effective than traditional court processing, with a 34% reduction in cost per case. And the study shows that there was 1,077 offenders, and of those 1,077 people, the offenders that went through the restorative justice program only 19.2% reoffended compared to 37.7% that went through a traditional court processing and punishment. So how do we combat the school to prison pipeline? We can reduce the number of suspensions and expulsions in schools. Schools can keep students in the classroom and prevent them from becoming involved in the criminal justice system by addressing behavior issues and using non-punitive approaches. We can also prior prioritize building relationships and open communication between students, teachers, and, administra and, and administrators. Fostering a sense of community is extremely important, especially for kids who may not have a stable home environment. In return, students are less likely to feel alienated and disengaged from the school environment, reducing the likelihood of them becoming involved in criminal activity. One of restorative justice practices' main focus is to seek out the root causes of problem behaviors, such as trauma and poverty. When schools provide support and resources to students who may be struggling, teachers and counselors can address the underlying causes of disruptive behavior and prevent it from further escalating into criminal activity down the road. Furthermore, here are some results I found from a study where schools implemented restorative justice. Schools found improvement in school climate by increasing feelings of safety and belonging, as well as reducing bullying and a more general sense of peace among the school. Students who participated in restorative justice practices reported their relationships with teachers and peers had improved and were more likely to feel that their voices mattered and the things they were saying were valued. Both teachers and students were able to find a mutual respect for one another. 
It was found in one study amongst the review that schools had implemented restorative justice practices had a 46% reduction in suspensions and a 31% reduction in expulsions compared to schools that did not use these practices. Another study within the review found that students who participated in a restorative justice program had a 31% reduction in dis disciplinary referrals compared to a control group. Another key finding is that restorative justice practices were associated with a 21% increase in attendance and a 25% increase in academic engagement and a 10% increase in reading and math achievement. What schools are using restorative justice? The Oakland School District was a model from many other schools who chose to use restorative justice. The restorative justice program was implemented because of high rates of suspension and expulsion among students of color. The program emphasizes building relationships, placing a sense of community, and addresses uh, the root causes of the student's problematic behavior. This program has shown significant reductions in suspensions and expulsions and has improved the overall climate and peace of the school. The other schools, uh, or excuse me, the other districts listed, Denver and Chicago, have also followed suit and have had similar results to Oakland. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.